It's now the tenth video in this um, tutorial series covering this basic helicopter model, which is growing a little less basic now. Um, in between the last video and this one, I've done a few things to get things rolling along. And as you can see, I have my propellers in motion now. I've um, also decided to duplicate my propellers. There's now actually two propellers and two rotors occupying the same space. <clears throat> As well, I've added specific attributes, the rigid body attribute, to all of these propellers, propellers and rotors as well as to the skids and I didn't set any bounds for any of the items except for the skids which I set for uh, box and I reduced the mass of all of these items to 0 0.01 and I did that because I've placed a couple of items onto the tail end and I don't want to chance that they're going to affect the handling of the helicopter too much and that their mass is going to actually impact in the in the game engine. I don't know how specifically the game engine will calculate the weights and balance of this helicopter but I placed a balance point in a specific place and I don't want to have the propeller interfering with that. For the motion on the propeller what I've done is I'm going to cover only the main propeller here is I selected the one propeller use shift key to select the other one and came down into the logic panel in the logic panel it lists rotor and rotor one which are now the names for those objects I added a sensor for each a controller for each and an actuator for each and then connect, connected them with the wire connectors from dot to dot. For the sensor, um, because I want the propellers to always move, I used the always option and it's set to that option by default. So all I really did was add it and connect it to the controller. And the same goes for the controller. I'm using the and option and that's its default state. So I simply attached the controller to the actuators. On the actuators I used motion and simple motion which are also default settings and in order to expand the motion of the propeller I have used two different rotational values in the appropriate field. Um, in the simple motion dialog there's several rows we're going to ignore most of them the main top two are location and rotation. Um, we set a rotation value, which is abbreviated ROT, in the last field a 0.26 for one propeller and 0.67 for the other propeller. And I'm going to experiment with these numbers to see if I can find numbers that are optimal for interacting with each other and creating the most motion from my propeller. The second thing that I've also taken uh, the time to do while in between videos was to add a pitch control to the helicopter. And I now have a pitch control where I can rock the helicopter using the mouse. And this pitch control is being connected or controlled by a Python script. How I set up the actual logic blocks for the script was to select the body, add a sensor controller and actuator and connect them the same as with the propellers. For the sensor I selected the mouse option because that's the sensor I want to use. I named it mouse and this name is contained within the Python script so I think that name's important and then I set the mouse to movement which is the sensor that it's going to refer to the movement sensor so when I move my mouse in the controller I changed that to Python which means Python script and typed in the name of the script with the file extension into 
select appropriate field. And for the actuators, all I had to do was add the appropriate actuator, which is simple motion, and attach the appropriate name, which is also contained in the script. Now, I'm going to stop and check my time really quickly and see how quickly I need to go over the Python script. The original script that is one that I found via internet search and its original name is Mouse Look and its intended use was for a first person game to control a camera and allow one to look around the 3D environment using the mouse. The author was pretty specific that people are free to use this script and just don't take credit for the writing of it. So credit for this script goes to to that writer. Um, Mouse Look can be found on a website. Uh, it's hosted on a site and it's www.tutorialsforblender3d.com. And they have some great information on that site too, a lot of information on Python commands and such. Um, well, their list of commands listed helped me to figure out how I could change this script. Like I say, I know very little about scripting. It's been a long time since I've done anything like that. I'm quite out of touch with most modern scripting languages. Well, all modern scripting languages. I've been trying to do some reading up on Python though to get that figured out a little bit better. So all of my changes are highlighted and what I'm going to do is go over my changes very quickly. First thing that I did is renamed it the actuator. Um, it originally had two actuators but I only needed one for my purpose. So I renamed the actuator pitch and got rid of one of them because I didn't need it. The second change that I made was this script uses the mouse pointer position and its distance from the center to determine the level of movement that it makes and in that process setting a mouse sensitivity was necessary. Uh, the original script had a mouse sensitivity set of 0 .0005 and I changed that sensitivity even lower to 0 .00003 which just makes it so when I move the mouse the pitch control is a little less sensitive and a little less hoppy. Uh, the next thing I changed was I renamed variables so that they kind of made sense to me. The original script had the variables as left right and up down and I simply changed them to x1 and y1 and I also had to change the up down y1 variable by multiplying it by a factor of minus 1 and that inverted the control to make it appropriate for the pitch of my helicopter. The next change that I made was to was in setting the actual numbers and it's the command is called set d rot and what it does is sets the rotational value in the actuator. The original script again had two actuators so two values being set here and I simply changed that changed the name pitch and placed x1 and y1 in their appropriate locate locations for the rotational value and the last change that I made was to in the, where it actually activates the actuator um, I changed the name of the actuator it's activating and got rid of the one that I didn't need because again it had two where I only needed one. So those are the changes that I made to the script. Like I said I don't understand most of the script and I'm not really the right person to try to give any tutorials in writing a Python script. I have a lot to learn to be able to do that. 